Hello, welcome to the world famous French Hook Pass and welcome to the inside of the brand new BMW M240i X-Drive. But before we carry on with this review, remember that Cars at Coza is not only the best place to find your next car, it's also the best place to sell your car. Head to Cars at Coza forward slash sell dash car, we'll put the web address on the screen. Tell us about your car and we'll send your details out to over 1,600 dealers who will bid on your car. Right, here we go, a review of a two-door BMW. A purple one with a brown interior. It's like aubergine spec. Aubergines have become a bit problematic in the modern world. <laughs> bye bye! Woo! <laughs> Cars.coza. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. Let's begin with some numbers because there are some very interesting numbers to do with this car. So back in 2016, when the first M240i was released, it went on sale in South Africa for 653,000 Rand. The one I'm sitting in now has a base price, list price, of 1,063,000 Rand, which means that in one generation, this car has increased in price by half a million Rand. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite a bit. That's, that's a, it's a fair chunk of change. Also, some interesting figures. The uh, B58 engine underneath the bonnet now produces more power than the first M2. Yeah, the first M2 was 272 kilowatts and about 450 newtons. This is 285 and 500 newtons. But wait, here are some more numbers for you. This M240i needs that extra power because it has become quite a bit fatter than it used to be. Don't tell it, it's a bit self-conscious about it. But this car now weighs about 1,700 kilograms. So that makes it only 35 kgs lighter than an M4. And wait, there's more. Here's some more numbers for you. Because this car is built on the 3 Series and the 4 Series chassis with just a slightly shorter wheelbase, it is only 16 centimeters shorter than a 3 Series, but it's actually slightly wider and slightly lower. So, what is this 2 Series? What is this M240i? What is the point of having such a heavy two-door sports coupe? Well, it's not all doom and gloom. Let me explain. Well, let's look at why BMW have ended up in this position. The first two series was just based on the one series platform, which used to be rear wheel drive. Then BMW asked their customers, their one series customers, if they knew whether their car was front wheel drive or not. And 80% of them didn't even know. And so BMW thought, well, if we just build a front wheel drive chassis for our one series, we can then use it underneath all the mini products as well. And that will cut costs. But then they wanted to make a 2 Series, but now they didn't have a rear-wheel drive 1 Series chassis anymore. And so, instead of developing a custom rear-wheel drive chassis for the 2 Series, which would have been a waste of money because not many people actually buy 2 Series, they ended up using the 3 Series chassis. And here we are with a big fat 2 Series. And on the face of it, that all sounds like it's gone a bit pear-shaped for the 2 Series. And I must admit, before I got into this car, when I was looking at the specs, I thought to myself, ah, this isn't going to work. This is just going to feel like a two-door three series. And in some ways, it does. And that makes me a little bit sad because when I first drove the BMW 228, which had a four-cylinder turbo up front, that was one of the best BMWs I've ever driven. It was nimble, it was chuckable, it was fast. Funnily enough, it was actually faster than an E36 M3 and it was just a little 228i. It was an absolute peach of a car. But 
that 228 was probably the last compact two-door BMW that we'll ever have. And that's a little bit sad. However, through German voodoo and wizardry, they have somehow made the 1750 kg 3 Series chassis X-Drive 6-cylinder turbo 2-door thing work. It works as a sports car and it works as a Grand Tourer. It is quite possibly one of the best all-rounders I have ever driven. It somehow hides its weight through the magic of BMW tuning their suspension to become something that you actually want to chuck around. I, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I don't know how they get this right. So as mentioned, up front, three liter straight six turbo B58 engine, 285 kilowatts, 500 newton meters. In horsepower terms, that's 396, if I'm not mistaken. Zero to 100, 4.3 seconds, permanent all wheel drive. This is a strange concoction of all of BMW's parts and components, but flick it into sport mode and every stab of the throttle is accompanied by that lovely straight six howl. The eight ratios of the ZF auto transmission, same transmission you get in the M3 and M4, and it's the only transmission you can have, are quite closely stacked and so when you fire through the gears the revs climb quite quickly back to the red line and that actually makes for quite an exciting and involving drive and all the time you're just getting this wonderful straight six howl very typical bmw howl little bit from under the engine little bit of induction noise and most of it sort of coming from under your backside sort of resonating through the exhaust system rather than shooting out the back of the car. And BMW have imbued the X-Drive system with a bit more of a rear wheel drive nature. So you find that it doesn't want to understeer, it wants to maybe step out a little bit at the back, but it is very sure-footed. It sort of feels a bit more like what you might associate with driving an Audi to be like than say a typical BMW. But with all this power, there's quite a lot of torque as well, 500 Newton meters. I'm actually okay with it having all wheel drive. I do feel like they've engineered a little bit of a kick into each gear change, especially when you're in sport mode, because when they moved over to the ZF torque converter from the MDCT dual clutch box, I think people missed that sort of kick in the back that you got every time you shifted in the MDCT, which is now largely a thing of the past, but it does sort of simulate what that box used to do. It does kind of give you that hard shift on the upshift. So unlike some other all-wheel drive systems in the BMW lineup, you can't decouple the rear axle here. So you can't turn this into a drift monster. So no burnouts for you and no hanging the tail out around corners. And again, those are things that certain people who buy into the BMW brand are looking for. And unfortunately, they're not available with this M240i. You're going to have to wait for the M2 if you want to get your hooligan on, but how much more is that going to be? If this is at 106.3 million, gosh, I think the M2 is going to be an expensive exercise. <laughs> and even riding on 19 inch wheels, the ride is really comfortable. You know, you put it, it's got those adaptive dampers. 
So you put it into comfort, and then you're just in this calm, serene, six-cylinder GT car. What a wonderful example of a motor vehicle with a dual personality. There are a couple of things that frustrate me a little bit about the M240i. Like all BMWs with the lane keep assist, I find it too aggressive and it doesn't seem to be aware of what's happening on the road. So for instance, just now there was a truck coming in my direction in my lane because he was overtaking some cyclists. So I pushed over to the left, the car picked up the yellow line on the shoulder and then just pushed me back towards the truck. It's like, hello, that's, this is not a good idea. This is, this is not very helpful. And of course you can, you can cancel out the lane keep by indicating and then you can cross the lane and that disables the, the system's reaction. But sometimes you just need to quickly move over the lane, you know, and then it's like, nope, we're going back in. Tough, toughies. So that I find frustrating. But of course you can just disable that, although you have to disable it every time you get back into the car. Then the instrument binnacle. You know, for a long time, and I have an old BMW, which has that wonderful old orange hue to the dials. And that orange hue actually scientifically is very clever because it means your eyes don't necessarily have to adjust when you look from the dials back out onto the road, especially at night. And that's sort of gone now from BMW instrument clusters. And that's a bit sad, I think. I mean, it's there in bits, but it's mostly red. And then if you're an Eco Pro, then it goes blue. But also, I find the instrument cluster a little bit too busy, in my opinion. There's a bit too much going on here. I, I don't know. There's, there's, not sure what the solution is, if I'm honest. But it is a little bit difficult. Your eyes get pulled in a lot of different directions. The heads-up display does help with that, though, and that just gives you exactly what you need to know right in front of you. So you find yourself not actually looking down at the dials too much. And then there is the general nature of this car. You just get the feeling that because the M2 is coming, it can't be that loud. And because the M2 is coming, it can't be that powerful. And because they still want to sell you an M2, it can't be that fast. And because they still want to sell you an M2, the setup can't be that aggressive. So you sort of end up with a car that potentially is a bit watered down. And I think that's a little bit of a pity. However, if you're looking for a more refined experience, a less aggressive experience, because the M2 be honest does feel a lot like it wants to kill you half the time and that's not very relaxing so if you're looking for a slightly more mature driving experience then i think the m240 is actually set up very very well but for those looking for ultimate bmw-ness then you're going to have to wait for the m2 so yes the bmw m240i has become very heavy it's also become very expensive and I am a bit sad that BMW doesn't really offer a compact rear-wheel drive two-door sports coupe anymore however if you think about this car as a two-door three series then it makes sense I think that's basically what the two series has become now And I know you're probably saying, no, Chero, the 4 Series is the two-door version of the 3 Series. But for me, that's quite a different proposition to this car. It occupies a fairly strange place in BMW's lineup now, but that doesn't mean that it isn't really good at what it does and really enjoyable to drive hard or to drive comfortably across long distances. It is a very good all-rounder but at 1063 million rond that puts it in some very very tricky company get yourself a nice 718 Porsche for that price um, yeah that's a tough one look 
definitely more usable. Those are some proper back seats. You can get actual adults in there. That helps a lot. I think, and I've hammered the, I've driven the Civic Type R up this pass, and I think that was one of the best cars I've ever driven up this pass. And I think if I was in that car right now with its manual gearbox, I'd be having more fun. But if you ask me to take that or this back to Cape Town, I'd choose this. And I think that summarizes the BMW M240i xDrive. Right, thank you very much for watching. I'd love to know what you think of this car in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, maybe give that uh, subscribe button a little whack. Give it some love. Give it a little slap and tickle there on the subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next one. Alrighty, cheers. Be safe. Cars Koza is so much more than just a YouTube channel. You've got to check out our app. It's been downloaded over 1 million times in the South African Android store alone. The links are in the description below and I promise you it is the easiest way to find your next car. Cars.coza.